2,200 years ago, Egyptians made a surprising agreement on a sheet of papyrus. New research by the University of Copenhagen shows contracts found in the sand where the desert town Tebtunis once was indicate that poor Egyptians willingly exchanged their freedom for lifelong servitude. So these people voluntarily chose a life as temple slaves. And according to the contracts, they even signed up their children and their grandchildren. I'm your servant with my children and the children of my children. These papyri are the earliest well-documented examples of the phenomenon of voluntary slavery. So most temple slaves would be uh, engaged in agriculture one way or the other. And this is an example of, of what such a life might look like. The contracts are in a demotic script, an ancient Egyptian written language. While reading them, Kim Rielt makes a remarkable discovery. This is a contract written for a young woman. And in line five it reads, And I shall give to you two and a half copper pieces as my slave fee every month. They're not just uh, volunteered for slavery, they even committed to paying a monthly fee. But the purpose of the contracts was not only to make sure that the temple authorities would get their monthly fee, it was also the slaves' insurance, protecting them from something much worse than their daily duties at the temple. We're dealing with people at the very bottom of the social hierarchy, and these are people who were eligible for forced labor. In order to avoid forced labor, these people could sign up as temple slaves and thus gain asylum in the ancient temples. This opportunity contributes to our understanding of the social function of slavery. Traditionally, uh, slavery has been thought of as an institution that was forced upon people. But in this particular situation, we're dealing with people who voluntarily entered slavery through written contracts. For these people, choosing a life as a temple slave was evidently the lesser of two evils.